Welcome to the conversation. I'm Michael Schur on TYT. Today we are talking to a young progressive who left medical school, took a leap of absence, didn't leave it forever. Why did he do it? To run for Congress. Solomon Rajput ran against. This is how old the Dingle name is in Michigan. Debbie Dingle is the Congresswoman. John Dingle was in Congress. Uh, before I was born, that's how old they are. Uh, and uh, but but Salman Rushdie uh, went out there with a progressive agenda. Didn't win in August in the primary because it's very difficult to beat a Dingle in Michigan. But the message is out there. And and now what he's doing is uh, is starting a group, or he has started a group called Done Waiting. And we're here to hear about what they're done waiting for. Salman, welcome to the conversation. Michael, so great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. So, first of all, you know, one of my closest friends in the world lost a congressional race out here in California. You may have heard of him this <laughs> year, <laughs> and you've lost one. But being in the arena, as they say, pretty important. Winning better, being in the arena is pretty good. What's your quickly your takeaway from that race and what you learned, not just about you, but about how politics works in Michigan and in America? Yeah, it's really, really interesting. So. Um, we didn't win the election, which was definitely not our preferred outcome. <laughs> but we are really grateful that we won the hearts of 25,000 voters across the district. We made over 300,000 calls, sent over 400,000 texts. And what I really learned from this race is that there is so much untapped progressive energy in this country. We have so many young people in this country who want to get involved in politics, who want to get involved in championing progressive issues. Um, and actually, in our campaign, we're really grateful that we had uh, that we had over 400 interns and fellows who were spending you know anywhere from eight to 15 hours a week, every single week working on our campaign. So the uh, the um, the desire for the progressive agenda is there. It's palpable. It's national, um, and we just need to tap into that energy uh, in order to be able to help get um, progressives elected in a big way. And that's kind of what our organization is going to be focused on. That's great. And let's talk about the race quickly because let's yeah. keep it real. I'm, I'm interested in this stuff. Yeah, uh, when you you know when you ran, uh, you knew the hill was was yeah. steep because of the Dingle name, and and because I don't think there's a great deal of animosity towards uh, Debbie Dingle um, in in terms of uh, the 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 woman, except from the president who seems yeah. to have. A thing <laughs> for yeah, what was the what was the dynamic like in running for such an against an established candidate congressperson name in that state? It was really really interesting because um, you know Congresswoman Ningle, we harbor you know no ill will towards her. We never did this entire time, right? Like there's not this uh, there's definitely not this animosity. Um, and our campaign overall was very cordial, very civil. Um, it was really just a campaign about ideas and about policy, and so. Uh, you know, our district is very progressive. Um, you know, in 2016, Bernie Sanders carried this district um, handedly. The in the governor's race in 2018, the progressive candidates took the majority of the of the vote share. So in this congressional district, so this for us was really a campaign about ideas about progressive policies. Um, and so we would always say, you know, Congresswoman Dingell is a perfectly nice person, but she's not a progressive. Um, and that message resonated with a lot of people. But what we what we um, did discover is that there are a lot of uh, groups in particular, like progressive groups that um, were very aligned with our agenda. You know, everything that we wanted is what they profess to want. But um, they were just really scared of wanting to enter this race because uh, the Dingle name is the Longest American political dynasty in <laughs> United States history. So, so you know, there were a lot of people who, um, you know, we were kind of thinking would be allies, uh, and and unfortunately, we found that they were uh, um, scared of essentially the establishment and did not want to participate in the race. So, which is something that also we can talk about a little later, but something that we want our group to not <laughs> end up doing. Uh, well, well, that's interesting, and I think that that's an important uh, part of all of this is to you know. There are a lot of people, some of your most progressive friends and family in Ann Arbor, if you have any of them, and certainly friends, um, their families have been voting for Dingles forever, and they could be the most progressive people you know. So it's also changing habit as well as changing, uh, you know, the, the changing the the players there. But Absolutely. let's talk. Let, let's talk about done waiting. I mean, um, 
you came out of this campaign and you know a lot of losing candidates and I say this frequently will will speak to their supporters and say well we made a difference and this skeptical reporter in the back of the room will say oh, no you didn't yeah. um, but but you did and now you're taking that difference and you've got it uh, all that energy channeled into your group done waiting tell us a little bit about how it works and what its goals are yeah so with done waiting right essentially what we saw is that with an army of about 400 people from across the country, you know, in a couple dozen different states, we were able to give the establishment a huge run for their money, right? I mean, our campaign raised, you know, about like $150,000. Congresswoman Dingle spent over around $1.2 million to like stop our grassroots rebellion. And we still ended up taking about 20% of the vote. So if we're able to get able to create this much people power with you know just like 400 people imagine what we could do if we had thousands of people um and if we had an on demand army that could help progressives get elected across the country i mean right now if you're going up against the establishment you um have such little time you have very few resources, right? Like the establishment has all of the money, they've got all of the connections, they're taking the corporate money that we don't want any part of, right? So how can we possibly compete? The only way we can compete is through the power of people. But as um, anyone who's run a campaign knows, it is very, very challenging to build an enormous field program, an enormous volunteer program in order to be able to combat the power of the establishment. There were so many great candidates all across this country um, that uh, would be phenomenal in Congress, but are not able to kind of build up that people power. So what if we were able to tell them, we can give you an army of people. You know, if you get our endorsement, if you're supporting the right policies, if you seem like you have a shot of winning, we can make tens or hundreds of thousands of calls for you. We can dedicate hundreds of people to your campaign in order to help you win. So rather than having every single campaign across the country try to from scratch, learn how to become an organizer and make these huge, robust field structures. What if we centralized that process and gave it to people in order to get them, to, in order to help them win? And then in off-season elections, um, pressure centrists so that uh, we can actually bend the establishment to the will of the people. So that's what we are. We're an army of young people who are going to do all of that. It's it's amazing. I hear, how do you make a couple of things? One is how do you go to medical school uh, and do that? Because that seems like a life's commitment uh, on on the one hand, yeah. and and also you want to be a, a doctor. So there's a lot going on in in Solomon Rajput's life. How do you do that? But also the the follow up to that is how do you make done waiting indispensable for Democratic candidates, uh, whether they are you know what, what you call establishment or progressive or grassroots? How do you make your group indispensable? Is it sheer numbers? Is it intransigence? I'll let you answer. Absolutely. So actually, uh, your questions are pretty related because. Um, you know, I am a medical student right now, and thankfully, I've you know been able to kind of ease back into school. But classes are about to get really intense in a couple of weeks, and so there's only way for um, anyone to participate in a long-term movement, uh, especially when it's not like your job and you're not getting paid. Because everyone on our uh, in our organization, you know, the hundreds of people that are in our in our organization are volunteers. You need to have an enormous team. You need to have a very robust team where no one is expected to contribute um, an extraordinary amount of time. So all of us are, you know, only trying to spend a max 10 or 12 hours every single week working on this organization. But um, which is essentially kind of how we ran our campaign. But if you have so many people who are working in close coordination, you know, spending eight to 12 hours every single week, I'm um, in a very a systematic centralized structure, then you can actually like make an enormous impact. And so that's kind of the goal. Um, and so for me, you know, my role as uh, the chair of Done Waiting will be to be the face of it, to really, you know, create lots of uh, um, compelling content to make people want to join our organization and apply to be like interns and fellows, which is really like we're going to create this big army. Um, and so the way that we're going to be invaluable, well, first of all, we're only electing progressives. We're only like going to endorse progressives. You have to meet certain criteria for us. You have to be supporting the Green New Deal, Medicare for All, College for All, getting big money out of a political system, the Black Lives Matter movement, and the struggle for racial justice in the country. So um, if you know, uh, if you um, let me just ask you, all or nothing on that. If you're all of those things, but you're not for for the Green New Deal, uh, then you don't get your endorsement. You have to sort of check off every box. Yeah, so you have to check off all of those boxes. And like you know, as we know, there are so many other uh, issues out there that there are is a progressive stance on. Um, for those other issues, you know, those are, those are areas that we can be um, understanding of. You know, a particular district uh, makeup and potentially yeah. we would want to you know um, 
acknowledge that a district might not be ready for a certain uh, stance on a particular issue, but those five issues are non-negotiable. Um, you know, we're only interested in electing progressives, and um, for us to be able to be invaluable is that uh, is because of, is the resource that we're offering people, right? If we're saying, you know, if we make a hundred thousand calls or two hundred thousand calls for a race, you know, that's potentially like tens of thousands of votes, and. Um, and people and we're you know doing this totally for free because we want to make sure that this is something that uh, we do in order to help get progressives elected because this is part of the progressive movement. So we're offering this free resource to people uh, to campaigns, um, and if they're able to get our endorsement, we would love to you know provide it for them so that they can win and so that we can make this movement successful, the progressive movement across the country. And in a way, you're supplanting the need for the corporate money because you're yeah. delivering the votes. By delivering the actual votes and not doing it because you're getting paid to do it, right, Solomon right. Rushford, uh, really fascinating stuff. Uh, you know, I admire uh, the uphill battle that you entered. I admire, and by that I mean medical school. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, uh, but, exactly. but, but also the congressional race. Uh, really look forward to hearing what Dunwading is going to uh, is going to accomplish. And I guess we'll know that probably in 2022 when we see some of those midterm congressional and maybe Senate elections with uh, with candidates. Who have supported have been supported uh, by Dunn Wade. Uh, this is the conversation on TYT. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.